Welcome to the Bounty Parents virtual antenatal series. The series includes tips on pregnancy, breastfeeding, baby care and baby health. I'm Rach, a mum of two, and today I'm talking to midwife and lactation consultant Karen Abood about baby care. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me, Rach. Can you actually talk new parents through how to change your nappy? You need to put your baby somewhere safe before you change their nappy. So that may be a change table, you might have a bed that you put baby on, or perhaps even putting baby on the floor on a change mat. Also what you'll need to gather is your baby wipes, uh, the nappies, such as Huggies, that's a brand endorsed by the Australian College of Midwives. And then once you have all that in front of you, you can start to undress your baby and start to prepare to change your baby's nappy. Once the nappy is open, you'll need to wipe away any sort of uh, urine or poo that perhaps is there. With little girls, we always um, recommend wiping front to back. Little boys, it's always handy to just leave something across the front of them in case they don't wee everywhere. <laughs> and then once you've cleaned baby, you can then remove the old nappy, place the new nappy underneath them. Uh, there's usually just some fasteners at the back that will come open and then the nappy comes up between baby's legs and then fits securely around their tummy. And then you can just redress baby. You're then going to dispose of the nappy into the bin and always washing your hands post uh, nappy change. Is it safe to leave a baby on a change table? No, it's definitely not safe to leave your baby on a change table and it's very good practice to start just leaving your hand on your baby if you ever are to turn away and grab anything. And certainly even as your little one gets older, it's always recommended never to leave them on a change table. Besides nappies and wipes, what else do you need in your change station at home? So Rachel, it's probably handy to have uh, some hand sanitizer on your change table. Uh, some moisturiser, sometimes if baby's skin becomes a little bit excoriated or reddened you can use like a barrier cream and then you might find it might be handy to have like a little basket or box that you can actually move around the, the house with you especially if you don't have a designated place to change baby. That's such a good idea. <laughs> How many nappies does the average baby get through in that first month and is there a way to make it cost effective? Sure, so most babies can have use about 12 nappies a day, so that'll wow. add up to about 300 a month. So, oh my gosh, yes. that number. <laughs> so you want to get a nappy that's going to uh, keep baby dry for longer, so you know, a good 12 hours of protection, um, and then that way it's more absorbent, so fewer changes. So it's good for mums maybe during pregnancy to look around for perhaps buying like a bulk buy of newborn yeah. nappies. Huggies newborn nappies have a dry touch layout that locks away running poos, keeping skin cleaner and drier and a breathable cover to help circulate air around baby skin. They were perfect for caring for my little one's newborn skin. And their water wipes are made from 99% purified water, contain no added preservatives and are proven to be gentle on skin. Plus, Huggies is endorsed by the Australian College of Midwives, so you know you can trust them on your little one. When it comes to bathing a newborn baby, it can be a bit daunting. Correct, it can be, because for some parents they've never even held a baby before, let yeah. alone trying to bath them. So what will happen is you will be guided with your first bath in the hospital environment with your midwife, and they will generally run you through how to bath your baby. Mostly what we try and focus on is safety. Where you're going to bath your baby, it needs to be a surface that is usually at sort of waist height, so you're not sort of compromising your back in any way. You want to be able to fill the bath close to a water source, so you're not carrying like heavy sort of um, containers of water anywhere. Getting everything ready first before you actually start to undress your baby is really important. So a change of clothes, nappy, a face cloth, towel, perhaps if you're using any sort of products to clean baby with. And then certainly preparing the bath water is a really important sort of skill for parents to understand. Um, newborn skin is a lot thinner than an adult skin, so the temperature of the bath water usually needs to be about 37 degrees, which we know that's what the amniotic fluid is. Uh, testing that can sometimes, parents might use a baby bath thermometer or good old fashioned elbow. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and then just being really sort of cautious of when we're running the bath water in, we usually, um, in, you know, teach parents to run the cold water first, then add the warm water and then run the cold water through the tap sort of at the end of the bath, just so it pre prevents sort of that risk of baby getting burnt or parents scalding themselves. I remember with my little one, I was so nervous. 
How do you hold a slippery baby in the bath? Oh, they are very slippery. Yes. <laughs> So what I tend to encourage my new parents to do is when you've set up your bath changing like you know, area, you will have a space next to you um, that you'll have your towel and everything ready. So you will actually be shown this in the hospital, just how to sort of bath your baby. We do actually uh, sort of encourage that you start with the baby's eyes to begin with and doing that on this area here. So you're not having to sort of worry about doing all of that in the bath. So. The eyes are usually important that you always use like a clean cloth or a cotton ball just with plain water in it. Always concentrating from the inner aspect to the out when you're wiping so that you're cleaning anything sort of, you know, from in to out of the baby's um, eye. They do tend to get quite sweaty in these early weeks and days. So behind their ears tend to get a little bit sweaty. So it's always good to wipe in behind their ears with the clean face cloth. Wiping their face um, and certainly here underneath, they often get a little bit sweaty as well. And then what we would uh, sort of encourage our parents to do is to wrap their baby in their towel. And this gives them an opportunity to hold their baby securely. And then that's when we would perhaps instruct them to wash the baby's head. So that's, you know, you'd be holding the baby over the bathwater, using the bathwater to sort of moisten baby's head and then giving an opportunity to sort of massage baby's scalp. A lot of parents get concerned about the baby's little fontanelles. We've got two little fontanelles in the baby's head, yeah. one at the back and one at the front. The one at the back closes at three months, one on the top closes at 18 months. So little soft spots, yeah. try not to worry too much about that. Um, just gently massaging baby's scalp is really encouraged because it does actually help to reduce the oils and if they get a build up of those oils they can get cradle caps so that's something to be mindful of. Knowing that babies lose most of their heat through their head so you don't want to keep their head wet for too long so you would dry that off and then you're going to paste baby back down on that flat surface. And this is when we would unwrap baby, take that nappy off because you probably want to leave the nappy on because often they'll poo or wee and you don't want to go that in the towel. <laughs> and this is when you can use the opportunity to use your hands with some water or if you're using something and start to just really massage from here down, getting into baby's little creases under their arms, um, using this opportunity to really connect with your baby. They love touch. So this is a time for parents to really enjoy this process. And then this is when we would teach parents in the hospital to pick their baby up. And normally what you'll be shown is to place your hand underneath your baby holding onto one of your baby's arms and then a hand onto your baby's bottom and then gently lifting them down into the bath water and then use that time just to enjoy the connection. Yeah. And once you're at home and say, I'm not feeling too confident to have a bath, is there another option for parents to do besides running a whole bath yeah, when they're at home? Sure. So we do actually talk to parents in hospital about the importance of not bathing baby's skin every day because it's really important to leave their natural oils on it. So totally just top and tailing your little one um, is, is sufficient enough and you can often use a purified um, Huggies wipe to do that, cleaning baby's little delicate areas, uh, certainly just, you know, often in their little creases of their nappy area, making sure that's really clean. Soothing a baby is always a popular topic. It can be tricky at first to work out why a newborn is crying. What are some of your tips, Karen? Oh, <laughs> the most asked question, why my newborn yes. is crying. So I try and support parents to let them have like an understanding of what is normal newborn behaviour. So in those early days, trying to support parents to understand the transition that their little one has made from interuterine to extrauterine, I think really does help them have a better understanding of those first early weeks of parenting. Often helping parents to sort of navigate why their baby's crying, you know, you start a little bit of a checklist. Are they hungry? Um, do they need a nappy change or are they just overstimulated? And I think this is one of the most missed sort of cues that parents really um, struggle with in those early weeks is newborns do get very overstimulated very quickly. Yeah. How can I, as a new parent, understand those cues a little bit better? So I think what we try to support parents with is getting them to have a little bit of a better understanding of what the transition's been for their newborn. Uh, our newborn has come from an environment where they felt completely safe, secure. There was always background noise, there was always movement. So these are the concepts that we try and help parents to start incorporating into their soothing cycle or their soothing techniques when helping their little one to you know, feel safe and calm.
I remember with my little one, he would be asleep on my chest and the moment I transfer him into his bassinet, he's awake. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I try and support parents to help them understand why this perhaps is always the case. We have to remind ourselves that we're newborn mammals and as a newborn mammal, we need connection. So we are the only mammals that try and put our babies in a plastic box when they're born. <laughs> so what I try and help parents to navigate through these early weeks, uh, we talk about the next 10 to 12 weeks post-birth being the fourth trimester. So this is when our little one is transitioning from that womb-like environment and how do we mimic as many of those womb-like associations into baby's sleep space. Hunger cues were easy for me to pick up. As a new parent, are there any other cues to look out for? Oh, Rachel, I think this is one of the trickiest things of early parenting is yes. recognising your baby's tired cues. And I really try and encourage new parents that I work with to sort of really be observing for those earlier tired cues. Because once baby gets past that overstimulated sort of point, they are a lot harder to soothe. Mm -hmm. So often you'll find in a newborn, they'll get quite jerky with their arms and leg movements. And this is why sometimes it's really recommended that we wrap babies in those early weeks. We know they have that startle reflex that's really active for the next 10 to 12 weeks, usually disappears around 10 to 12 weeks when they start to roll. So we really want to confine that little reflex in those early weeks and that will help them to sleep and feel a bit more safe and, and sort of secure. Another really sometimes not so obvious tide cue is that babies get quite glazed and stare. And this is a really good early cue to parents that when they see that baby zoning out and staring off into the abyss, it's their way of you know, communicating to us that we need to help babies start to wind down. Okay. So it's checking their nappy, wrapping them, um, perhaps, you know, using a bit of background white noise, um, maybe a bit of body rocking, just to help baby get to that sort of calmer sort of state. Um, often babies will get quite grimaced. You'll see them mm, grizzle. And this is so another <laughs> really obvious tired sign. And these are the sorts of early cues that we're really trying to help parents to identify. Sleep is one of the most searched for topics for new parents, with some parents feeling like they need to get their newborn into a routine as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Do they need one? So Rach, I think what's really important here is that we um, help parents to understand that what is normal newborn behaviour. And we know that newborns um, don't have the ability to actually develop any type of routine behaviour. They are born with no circadian rhythm. They tend to be more nocturnal because they're a newborn mammal. So it's just helping parents understand what's normal newborn behaviour. And eventually what you'll find is that most parents get into their own rhythm with their newborn. What do new parents need to consider for safe sleeping for their newborn baby? Uh, what parents need to know that baby must always be placed on their back to sleep. Uh, we encourage the babies at the bottom of the cot and only ever sort of tucked in from their shoulders down. If baby's to be wrapped, it's in a breathable fabric so baby can regulate their temperature. It needs to be a smoke-free environment. Can a new parent put their baby straight into a cot and in their own room? Well, Rach, it is recommended through Red Nose, uh, one of the six steps is that a newborn shares the same room as their parents or primary caregiver for the first six months of life. Okay. So it's important for parents when they're choosing what their baby is going to sleep in, that it's going to sort of fit into their sort of lifestyle, their room and be comfortable. So Rach, before you try any of those tips, it's always handy to check baby's nappy first, make sure they're in a good, clean, dry nappy with good absorbency, because they're less likely to wake up if they're kept dry for longer. So true. Thank you so much for joining me, Karen, and for sharing all your wonderful tips for new parents. Thanks for having me.